I'm Katie, mom to two littles and four angel babies. With a PhD and over a decade spent unraveling how our society shapes mom's experiences, I am here to shred the rule books and their relentless tide of expectations. In this safe space, the complexities of motherhood find a candid, unfiltered voice. We're Undefining Motherhood, one conversation at a time. In her book, Braving the Wilderness, Brene Brown talks about her unrelenting quest to fit in as a child and even into adulthood. That was mostly my story, too. I've always felt like a little bit of an outsider, even in my closest circles. But in this episode, I had a revelation that was pretty stunning to me. When I had my son and learned about all the different parenting styles, I realized that I didn't fit in anywhere. And I actually found that to be strangely empowering. Because the rule books and boxes moms are put into hold us captive, and dismantling them is a freedom moms deserve. That's why I created this podcast and the entire Undefining Motherhood media company. I hope this episode will help you find your place in our space, a space without walls, rules, styles, or judgment. After a decade of researching Victorian motherhood and lamenting for these poor moms who just couldn't possibly have ever felt like they were doing it right, I started trying to have a baby myself, and I realized that in the past 150 to 200 years, not as much had changed as I liked to think it had. You know, if you think about it, these women were being bombarded by all of this conflicting information and advice, and this is how you do this, and this is how you do that. And we were, at the very same time that I was studying this, living in our own kind of industrial revolution, right? Mm, It's the internet internet. (laughs) era. And I, yeah, you know, I couldn't have imagined when I was listening to that AOL dial-up from the desktop in my parents' rooms going, that this was going to be something that would be so defining in my experience as a mother. And yet, here we are. Because now we're not getting that information from religious tracts and conduct manuals. We're getting it from mommy blogs and, and in the comment sections. The comments section. Oh, the comment sections. The Facebook mom groups and TikTok and Instagram and Reddit and all of this online media. Plus, we get it from Hollywood, from pop culture, from magazines, from new. Like, it's quite literally everywhere. And when you can't escape that. How are you supposed to feel like you're doing this motherhood thing right? Right? Mm. But can you feel good about it? So I started to wonder about this because I've been wondering about it for these poor Victorian moms for, you know, almost 10 years. And all of a sudden now I'm in this place and Shortly, it reminds me of this commercial. Um, We'll link to it in the show notes, but I, I bet a lot of people remember it. So shortly after Jack was born, this commercial was released by Similac, and they called it The Motherhood. And it opens with, like, all of these, like, camera zoomed in on one, like, click or faction of moms. And in one case, dads. And they're, like, walking into this beat of this music that tells you, like, we're pre-fight. Like, this is, you know, each boxer is entering the ring. And there are the breastfeeding moms and the formula-feeding moms and the baby-wearing moms and the stroller moms and the working moms and the stay-at-home moms and the moms wearing their babies while they do yoga And then they get close enough together that they can talk because first they let us visually see these factions and then they can talk to each other and they start hurling insults at each other and all trying to show like, I consider myself superior to you from my parenting choices. They're calling each other names 
it's ridiculous. It's such a caricature, right? Like you're about to pick up the remote and press fast forward because it's so absurd. And then all of a sudden, everything stops and everything quiets. And the moms are, were like, they were running in to fight each other. Mm-hmm. And then the camera pans over to this lone stroller sitting by itself about, and it starts rolling down a hill. And all of a sudden, everyone comes together and they all start running to get to this stroller. And suddenly these parents who were so, I I like the word faction because they made it so dramatic that it almost was a little Hunger (laughs) Games-ish. And they're all working toward the same purpose, which is just making sure that this baby is safe. And two of the dads get to the baby first. But basically, they all converge on the stroller at the exact same time. A bunch of hands go onto the stroller. The mom or one of them pulls back the hood that's over it. And you see this just precious, cooing, smiling little baby. And then they start shaking hands and introducing themselves. And this text pops up on screen. And it says... No matter what our beliefs, we are parents first. Welcome to the sisterhood of motherhood. Aww. So why was that commercial so important to you? It sounds really formative. It was. It was really formative for me. And yeah, here's why. This commercial came out while Jack was a newborn. So I saw it for the first time when I was sitting with my baby, rocking him, holding him. And I think it was formative in part because I had done all of this research for so long on, like, parenting factions and parenting styles, but not necessarily in a contemporary context. Um, But actually, the main reason that I think it sticks with me so much is because I found this commercial to be incredibly empowering. Hmm. That that sounds weird, right? Yeah. It was so empowering. Uh And the reason it was empowering is because I didn't fit. I was a breastfeeding mom who loved baby wearing, who had him in his own room, in his own crib that I watched from a monitor, not even on the same floor of the house. I used cloth diapers, much to the chagrin of every other caregiver who ever helped with him. But... I wanted to reduce my dish load, and so I used the kindy bottles that are actually just plastic bags, and so all you have to wash is the bottle cap. Mm -hmm. So I'm environmentally friendly, and I'm environmentally (laughs) unfriendly. I didn't fit into a box, and I found that to be so empowering. And this is the moment that I decided I was leaving academia, and I was going to found this company called Undefining Motherhood. Undefining Motherhood started as a blog, and now we are a full-blown media company. We have a robust website. We we have uh, books that support moms. We have flourishing social media channels. We have a newsletter that supports moms every single week. We're launching an app. We now have this podcast, podcast, and it's going to do it, help us do it all a lot better. And this commercial made it so easy for me to articulate when I came up with a name, and I didn't tell anyone I was doing it except for John until, like, it was almost done. And then I was like, hey, peace out, academia, um, which was, like, <laughs> you, you know, it's yes, really <laughs> hard. It's a, it's a hard pivot to make in it's your life. It's an identity shift. It's a huge sure. identity shift in the midst of this other identity shift of becoming, becoming a mother. Mom, yeah. Like, that's how important right. I felt like this was. Um, and so my mom asked me when I showed her the logo and told her the Shout idea. Shout out, Kathy. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, mama. Um, she said, why undefining? Why not redefining? Hmm. And I said, because we have been defining what this role means for centuries. And we have put expectations 
and beliefs and ideologies on mothers. And we have pressured them and we have built entire institutions that make them feel like they have to do things certain ways and they never, ever feel like they're good enough. And enough is enough. Sure. So it's you don't t- want to create a new definition. We're not. We're you just not, want to break the old one down. We, we don't need definitions. Yeah. We don't. Motherhood doesn't have to be Preach. defined. Yeah. I got to be a mom when I was going through recurrent pregnancy loss, even yes, though my were. babies weren't in my arms. And you get to be a good mom, even if you're not a gentle parent, or even mm. if you're not a helicopter mom. Like these restrictions are what put us in box. They don't serve anyone. They don't serve anyone. And we have a century's worth of history of showing how they very specifically don't serve women and they don't serve mothers. And so we have been working for four years now on everything we can do to undefine motherhood. And now this podcast lets us do it even better. This episode is sponsored exclusively by Genate by Snip Therapeutics, providing genetics-powered nutrition tailored for every stage of the fertility, pregnancy, and postpartum journeys. Navigating pregnancy and motherhood comes with its uncertainties, but the Genate test gives moms a level of control over their own and their baby's health that they've never had before. It's more than just a simple cheek swab at home. It's a window into understanding your body's unique nutritional needs. Their tests made me feel so empowered. Not only did I learn I don't process folate or choline as effectively as some people, but I also learned what to do about it, what daily values I need compared to standard prenatal recommendations, what additional nutrients could help me absorb the ones that were harder for me, how to choose the best foods or supplements depending on my lifestyle to make sure I was getting what I needed. Their test isn't just a scientific breakthrough. It's a personal journey to better health for you and your baby. It's empowering to have this level of insight. Every mother deserves this kind of personalized care. Learn more at undefiningmotherhood.com forward slash genate and use code undefining10 for 10% off. We are undefining motherhood, not redefining it because motherhood is a role that has been defined for far too many centuries often not even by mothers themselves for years i have studied the theory and the history of how motherhood has been defined prescribed and turned into an institution with a set of rules and it is time to put that knowledge into action and to make the world better for moms awesome Should we give people a little bit of a history of what we've been up to before this podcast? You know, what I just said has been the goal of Undefining Motherhood from day Day one, one, right? And you're the only one who's been with me from day one. Employee one. We we could never have envisioned what Mm -hmm. this platform was going to turn into. Yeah, it's been a really wild ride. It's been a really wild ride, and I bet it's going to stay wild. Um, Part of me hopes so, and part of me would like to just breathe a little. (laughs) But, you know, when we launched Undefining Motherhood, we launched it as a website, and we didn't know anything about running a website. We knew how to write, and we knew, I knew Sarah knew how to edit, and she was someone who I trusted to hold me to account and to make me really dig deep on the things that I didn't necessarily want to dig into. To I knew she would bring a level of rigor that, as an academic, was very important to me because I cannot express to you the level of side-eye that you get (laughs) when you have a PhD and you have been teaching college your entire adult life. Both of us. And you tell people that you are leaving it to start a blog. Mm -hmm. And at the time, that's really what Undefining Motherhood was. It was a blog. And one of our friends still calls it a blog. We have a lot of (laughs) friends who still call it a blog. We are still teaching people not to call it a blog because at this point, 
we're we're a full fledged media company, and we have so many amazing things going on, and so much in the pipeline, and it's incredible. I'm really humbled to have kind of accidentally stumbled into being the CEO of this business that I never expected to run when all I really wanted to do was write. Yeah, you Um, wanted to write a book. I wanted to write a book. And so we launched Undefining Motherhood with basically the exact same mission I just laid out because I wanted to write a book. And to write a book, you have to have a platform. And so I was like, well, let's just build this thing and let's build this platform. And I had no idea what that looked like. And you needed to build the platform so that the publisher would take you seriously enough to publish your book. That's right. So a publisher that's where would this take all me started. Seriously, that's how it all started. Yeah. Because self-publishing is a really common thing. But in academia, self-publishing is like super looked down upon. Um, in fact, in academia, they call it vanity publishing. Mm-hmm. Um, Brene Brown has talked about how one of the first books she ever wrote, she published herself. Um, So clearly you can do just fine (laughs) with self-publishing if Brene Brown did it. But she actually talks about how one of her colleagues had put her book on his course syllabus for his students to read that semester. And then when he discovered that the publisher was what an academic would call a vanity publisher, which just meant she didn't go through a traditional corporate publishing house, she published it herself, he pulled it from the syllabus. He wasn't willing to have students read that anymore. Like, so this was a really stigmatized thing. Um, This is the world I was coming from. So it was like, well, I'm going to write a book and I'm going to, I'm not, I'm not going to self-publish it. I have to build the platform that, that will get me a real publisher. And the book was going to be called Undefining Motherhood. Um, and so the website started as a way to start iterating through some of those ideas. And what I quickly discovered was that it's really hard to run a website. Like, it takes a lot of work to run a website and actually write for it and produce content And then actually, like, find people to read it who aren't your mom and your friends. Sure. While you were parenting. Right. While I'm a brand new mom, I went back for one semester after having Jack. Mm -hmm. And I started doing this. We also had some family things that came up. And I was a caregiver for someone during the time when we were supposed to be launching Undefining Motherhood. So that kind of got pushed back a little. Like, it was a real whirlwind. Um, But... What I also discovered was that it's hard, and to do what I wanted to do with the level of rigor that I wanted to do it, I had to have people help me. Mm -hmm. And if I had to have people help me, I had to be able to pay those people. And if I have to pay those people, then I have to generate income Mm -hmm. somehow. There has to be revenue. And all of a sudden, I'm starting to try to figure out how to run a business that I never intended to be a business. And it's, it's worked out gloriously. Um, it has allowed us to expand in ways I never imagined. You've learned a lot. <laughs> We've learned so much. And we're we're getting to do so many amazing things that I'm just honored by and humbled by. But that has come with its limitations. Yeah, it's not a cost for right? sure. Right? Um, so one of the big limitations was that at first, the kinds of conversations that we're going to be having on these podcasts were the actual conversations we were writing in right. our articles. And the people who read our articles – Loved them. They also were people we knew in real life. (laughs) (laughs) Our parents. And now, you know, now we're in like the TikTok era where everyone wants things to be quick and short and easy to follow. And that means articles have to be really easy to scan in order for Google to rank them high enough for you to find them and help you mm-hmm. and for me to generate any revenue to pay these people who help me. And, uh, you know, it's it's tricky. So It's also soul-crushing, right? It's so soul-crushing. You're, like, soul you're crushing. having to write and or edit in a way that, you know, is sound bites on like an eighth grade level and, you know, people need this information quickly and easily and – so it's really cramped, like, you know, we, our we, writing we, styles. We made a joke in a, one of our earlier intro episodes about Sparknotes. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, basically we live in a world of Sparknotes mm-hmm. now. So, like, where we want to be writing deeply and thoughtfully in order to really help you and make it readable for you, we kind of have to do the Cliff Notes version. And I consume media the same way. Oh, yeah, totally. You know, like I look stuff up on Google and I want everything very quick and easy. So we have been talking for 
three years at least about starting a podcast. It's come up and been pushed under the rug and come up and been pushed under the rug. And basically what I kept saying was, I just don't feel like we have the bandwidth to do it to the level that we would want to do it where it's going to have that rigor. Um, and then so we, we realized we were never going to have the bandwidth, so we might as well just do it. Yeah, it, it, there's, <laughs> it, that's like one of the perfect lessons for adulthood, right? There's never going to no, be a right, right time. time. Yeah. Um, so if you just keep waiting for it, your life will just go on forever. Um, what I think we kind of ended up doing with that was we really made Instagram the place where – we were like super thoughtful. Mm -hmm. And it was like the website and our newsletter were supportive. Yes. They're made to help people to give them the quick and easy information they need that they know has been researched, it's been fact-checked, it's been curated. Like trust, we're people you can trust, we're research fiends, and we're not here to tell you how to do it. We're undefining. So we're not judging you yeah. through what we're saying. We're just giving you the information. Here's the information you do with it what you need to. Like yeah. y- you, you deserve reliable info and you deserve to make your own choices, right? Um, but Instagram kind of became the place where we were able to get really thoughtful And talk about the things that we really wanted to be talking about in deep detail. And I feel like that's where we've built our strongest community. And I love Instagram. So I don't want to put it down I have, we've recently started with TikTok and it's pretty fun to dabble into. I don't want to put it down, but again, there are limitations and those limitations are that you only have so much space and you only have so much time. And so basically the podcast just became our obvious next step. It went from like what we were talking about and hoping we could find time to, to like, look, we're we're hitting the sound bites of the important stuff and people are talking to us and they're asking for more. And so let's give them more. And that's what I want. It only took us four years. It only took us four years. So that's what I want from this podcast. That's what we're going to give you. So here is how this podcast is going to work. We're going to have it divided between seasons because everybody needs breaks and time off, right? Um, We're not going to be here every week of your life, but we will be when we're in season. Our first season is going to be divided into three sections, questions, advice, and words. So we are talking about the questions that we ask women and mothers that we do not typically ask men, the advice that we give to women and mothers that we do not typically give to men. So much advice. And the words that we use to describe women, women's bodies, their reproductive bodies that lead to motherhood, and even words we use to describe in motherhood that, again, would not be used to describe men. These are the questions we're asking in our very first episode for the regular season that is dropping next week. You are going to be able to listen to us talk about when are you going to have a baby <laughs> or another one? Because you know you've been asked. And at the end of each section, we will have an interview with someone who has just an amazing story or is a, a real expert in that area. It's going to be an invigorating first season. I am so excited about it. And we want to be really clear what we mean when we say mother, because we have chosen this word very intentionally. We understand that there are all forms of mothers, that there are people who might be performing the role of mother who do not have biological children, and we consider them mothers. Yeah. We recognize that there are people who might be performing mothering roles who might not identify as female, and we consider them mothers. We recognize that you might have babies who are in heaven or whatever ether it is that you believe they go to and they're not in your arms. And to us, you are mothers. You might be trying to conceive. You might have embryo babies. And to us, you are mothers. Mm -hmm. You might be an incredible aunt. You might be a foster mom. You might be an adoptive parent. You might be waiting for a surrogate to birth your baby. There are so many things that you might be. And if you consider yourself a mother, then you are always a mother to us. And you know what? Just for you, the listeners, 
I want you to know, here is our promise to you with this podcast. You ready? In this podcast, the complexities of motherhood, which are often simplified, often overlooked or silenced entirely, will find candid, unfiltered, honest, real voice. It's where the voices of mothers are not just heard, but they're truly felt and understood. Fostering inquiry. Mm -hmm. Critical thinking. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Through conversations that are sometimes tough. We're okay with tough conversations here, but always transformative. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the Undefining Motherhood podcast. It's been an honor to share this time with you. Remember, you're not just a listener. You're an essential part of our community. If today's conversation resonated with you, I have three simple requests for how you can help us grow. First, subscribe wherever you listened so you don't miss an episode. Second, we'd love it if you could leave us a review wherever you're listening to this podcast as that's one of the most important ways we can grow and share our message and community. And finally, we'd love to hear from you. Jump over to Instagram and find us at Undefining Motherhood where you'll see a post about this week's episode where we can continue the conversation. Thank you for being a part of the Undefining Motherhood community where together we're making change. Until next time, take care of yourself and each other.